Sparky, welcome back to the hey, channel. Hey, long time no see. Yeah, what you got there? Well, in my absence, I've been working on a little project here. Oh. I want you to check this thing out. Take a sniff of it. This thing, oh yes. Mm. Dude, I've been saving up for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Plenty of overtime to get that. But don't say it like that. Don't 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 say well, it here, like that. This is this is look at mine. quality. Look at mine. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh man, nice. can, you, can you shoot it sideways? Oh, I like oh, it. Yeah. I, oh man, I messed up. I should have <laughs> bought that one. Don't be these people. On today's video, we're gonna be talking about what not to do to your AR-15. We have Sparky with us once again. I'm back. Back like he never left because he really didn't. And we're gonna be talking about different things you should not do to your rifle or your AR-15 or your gonna be worked out. To dive right into it, the reason we're making this is to help you guys and new gun owners kind of stay clear of some pretty common mistakes. Common mistakes and things that you can get caught up in and kind of get a little overexcited. Get about. overexcited about, get lost in, especially if you're just getting into the AR-15 market because a lot of it's overwhelming. You see tons of stuff on Instagram that are that's horrible and you see tons of stuff. Even like a very like experienced gun owner that doesn't know a lot about an AR-15 could still have some misconceptions about or be not familiar about certain types of things and get lost in the nomenclature mm -hmm. and the and the whole process, right? Especially if you're building. Oh yeah, people get caught up in the, oh, I have this, it has options, I have to use it. Exactly, and that, that can be a lot and we're trying to help you, you know, not fall victim to that. So let's kick this off with the first thing we wanna talk about know your application before buying the firearm itself because your application can determine a lot of different which, things what you need and you don't need so like these examples here are very these are perfect examples for what we're about to talk about these are poor examples at the same time yeah for application purposes yes um a lot of people will think about maybe they want to shoot a i don't know a long range rifle well if you want to shoot a long range rifle, get a rifle that is pre-set up to shoot long range, like a longer barrel. Instead of going a 16 inch barrel, if you're wanting to shoot five, six, 700 yards with your five, five, six, you're gonna need a 20, 22 inch barrel on that rifle to get the range that you want. Yeah, depending on your caliber, but yeah. Yep. yeah typ the, typically, yes. The, typically, the longer the barrel, the more velocity, velocity yeah. you can pull off of it and the better at distance shooting it will be. Now, that's not to say that any caliber is like that and every caliber is like that. Exactly. There's different things. Like once you go past a certain barrel length, your air velocity actually drops. Yes. So keep, keep all of that in mind, but get a firearm that is fitted for your application. So like for a home defense weapon, this one right here, I would say would be a good home defense firearm. This, this is a- Poor setup for home defense. Poor setup for home defense because it'll get into some of the other reasons uh, and things to look out for. Sorry to interrupt, but we wanted to tell you about the 50K giveaway that's going on now. We just hit 50K subscribers here on the YouTube channel. So big thank you to you guys. And to show our gratitude, we wanted to give away a stag rifle, an HRT plate carrier, as well as a primary arms red dot, and also some basement operator merch. So you should head on over to the link in the description, take someone outdoors.com forward slash links, and click the very top link and sign up for the giveaway. It's absolutely free. You just have to be over 18 years old and your state has to allow it and you have to be in the United States. So that's really all that you have to do. So uh, go check it out. Thank you guys once again. But this is a Diamondback pistol. Screw the ATF. This would be a fantastic option. And we've talked about it in our perfect setup for home defense. This was one of the firearms that was mentioned as a good option for home defense because you know it's compact, it's easy to use, it's chambered in nine millimeter wildly abundant mm -hmm. round cheaper uh, to shoot cheaper to shoot cheaper to practice with this firearm has zero recoil whatsoever when you're shooting it so you know if, if your significant other needs to use it or you know someone that's not as strong needs to use it they can definitely handle it and be more efficient with it with obviously practice but that's one of the things that is super super important is having a good purpose do you have anything to add to that old sparky yeah like so if as the example of a home defense weapon definitely don't go this route because this is not meant like this is not meant for home defense my, it's big, it's, it's, bulky, it's, it's, it's hard longer, to get around. Doesn't have a collapsible stock. It's just just this rifle outside the setup is not meant for home defense. Or 
you won't be it. as good for home defense. Don't buy a rifle and then claim it's home defense and then put like a three to nine optic on it. Exactly. It's not practical. Mm -hmm. You know, your argument won't be there. Somebody will kind of look at you like, like wait so you're buying this for home defense, but you're putting a three to nine optic on it, which is a heavily magnified optic. And you're going to cross the room. Yeah. And you're going to be like, you're going to be picking it up and acquiring your target across the room mm -hmm. effectively. Hard you know? to find your target. Yeah, it's Whoa. gonna be harder to find it. And then if it's already accidentally like already on the nine power, you, you might as well just like point and shoot at that yeah, point. Exactly. I, I think the purpose and understanding what you're wanting to actually use the rifle for is super, super oh, important. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I agree. Ha when you're when you're considering your stuff, that's one of the things you need to do. And it's I think it's super cringy when something's like like this right here. <laughs> well, this is cringy anyway. Yeah. yeah. Like this, and they're like, it's a home defense gun. Like, no, not really. You can I use mean, it as home I defense. mean, yeah, it's I mean, anything, harder. like we had mentioned, anything is a home defense gun technically, yes. but no. And to piggyback off of, you know, having an application for the firearm and to focus around, Yeah. set a budget, unless you have just, you know, endless amounts of money or prior to you. If you have a budget to work with, stick to it and don't skimp out. So would you say our next thing is don't spend all your money on on one thing. If you're going to focus your thing, focus your money on one thing, it'd be just an overall Good. solid rifle I or agree. solid firearm. Mm -hmm. So like if you're building, you can obviously, you can buy an Anderson lower and you can piecemeal it mm -hmm. to like some stuff you don't have to spend as much money on yeah. and some stuff you do. If you are building out, I would say biggest thing is definitely barrel and bolt. Um, I always recommend somebody buying the same barrel and bolt like if, if it's a diamond back barrel, get a diamond back bolt because you know, a lot of times they're going to be head spaced for each other and mm, they're, they're, they're meant to be, they're meant to be. So like if you buy something like a, I don't know, ballistic advantage and then a diamond back, I mean, I'm not saying they will work. I'm just It'll saying work. it's just not. Yeah. yeah I agree. And so one thing I, that's pretty easy to pick out, what people will do is they'll buy like a super nice optic and then skimp out on the rings. Yeah. Like they'll, like they'll buy you know a four to five six hundred dollar optic and then they put twenty dollar mounts on it yeah will it work maybe maybe for a little bit maybe till you know you gotta keep checking them until but, you got <laughs> yeah give exactly. it a little ugga -da -dugga -da yeah down on the but that, that's one thing that like bugs me yeah you did the right thing by getting the right optic but you also have the right mounts for it the mounts are just as pointing as the optic and on that scope subject as you can see on this one this is something you'll see even people that you know think they know something which that's not even us but like you'll see people like that buy you know put a scope on a ar-15 like this is you'll see how they put one of the scope rings or the scope mounts on the actual handrail itself will it work sure just don't shoot it a whole whole lot you can do that sometimes there's there's very few and very specific applications for when you can actually uh do that. mount or your optic on the rail of your gun i was I've noticed like older Mark 12 models of the military. Yeah, but they that's use like, that. This is, so this is a cheap, a cheap rail and a cheap optic. And like, I would not trust this thing to be mounted to both my receiver and my rail system. If you want good consistent groups. If you want good consistent groups because your rail and your receiver aren't locked together. Necessarily. So they could. There's gonna be some play. There, there could be play. Mm -hmm. We're not saying there will be, but there could be play. And that's one of the things that comes out of mounting in two different locations. And that's so, just not knowing better. Yeah, and that's just, and you just don't know better. Yeah. And, you know? And that's nothing against the person necessarily. Like, but if you just, if you don't know, you don't know. Yeah. But that is one of the things, like every time I see it, I'm like, no. Yeah. It's like, you know, so. Like, like if, if you know, you know, and you see it and you're like, no. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, and this is, and the whole point of this video, sir, so we're making light of some mistakes, but also like, it's also a warning. Like, hey, these are some things to look out for. Yeah. You know, just because, you know, you're, it might just be a common, you know, mistake yeah. you make. And, and you then, might not and be trying. We're not to, trying to like bust your balls over it. We're just, you know, we're like, just, hey, this is some of the things you got to look, look out for. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's nothing against the person. And I mean, I've made know. this mistake. So when oh, I first yeah. got my very first AR 15, I did that. Mm -hmm. you so, no. I mean, I just didn't know. Then you, and then somebody's gonna call you on it on YouTube and make mm -hmm. you cry, and then yeah, you get over it. You know, you figure it the out. The comment section's good for that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I've, cried, I've cried many times. Build many characters. Times, yeah, many times. I yeah. still dream about that shotgun. <laughs> but, <you know. laughs>
back doors and turning lights on, know, making, giving making, away your position. FUD lore. Making tracks, man. FUD lore, Sparky. Hey, your, hey, your light's a little loose. Leave that thing alone. So don't spend all your money in one, one place. Now, what I would recommend is like what Sparky had said in the very beginning, set in your budget, whether that be a thousand, fifteen, whatever you can afford. We're not harping and like hating on cheap stuff because we get it. Not everybody can spend $1,500 on a rifle. We've been there. Mm -hmm. We've been there, done that. You know, I get it. I've spent a $500 rifle and I've put a $250 optic on it. And I mean, just fine, just fine. And then I've gradually got better stuff as I've went mm -hmm. on in my life and can afford to get better stuff, you know? So exactly. I'm not, we're not hating on the budget because we've been there. We still do that. And, but we're saying, set something and if you're only buying once get something nice get something good do a lot of research into it make sure the purpose is there on the subject of price don't accessorize the gun just to drive up the price so you can be like oh i spent twenty two hundred dollars on this ar yeah or whatever like you put the, enough the, crap on it it'll it'll yeah, raise the price the, the, the price of the gun shouldn't determine how good the gun is necessarily well like this one right here just because of this magazine, this is like a hundred and some dollar magazine. Yeah. 60 round mag. Yeah, but this like, makes this, this adds the price tag of this gun up a lot. Buying quality accessories for accessories that you actually need for your application, that's gonna drive up the price anyway, buying quality ones. Yeah. But I'm saying like, don't buy just junk accessories just to have them and cover and, the gun and cover the gun yeah, and accessories and, just and, to have them. And that's that's one of the other topics I'd like to, like to add to the list is don't buy something just because you saw somebody have mm -hmm. it because you might not know why they have it you might not know what they're using it for Ask them. and however you're using it just because you saw it bought it and put it on your gun doesn't mean you're using it correctly mm -hmm. and doesn't mean you have it mounted correctly so like prime example for this one is like this thing all the way up here now if you're like six seven and have like seven pl plus foot wingspan maybe that makes sense if you got that long arm makes sense but potentially like, this but, is like how the daniels defense guns are sold oh yeah they are but like, <laughs> i can't stand it <laughs> but this but this is just preference this is a preference thing yeah. and also if like if you buy a gun and start playing with it like that you're gonna figure out oh i like this because this is more comfortable or this this makes more sense for my application that's totally different that's someone who's you know informed themselves by experience and they're gonna you know orientate their rifle to fit what they need but yeah don't just slap something on there because you saw someone else have it or it's like oh that was cool and, i don't need and, it but i'm buying it and and that's one thing you, you kind of touched on it right there is training with your rifle and there's no better way to train than on your own land so we would like to give a big shout out to one of the biggest sponsors of the channel classic country land classic country land helps us with all of this stuff so we want to give them a big old shout out so thank you Classic Country Land for supporting the channel. You can go check out their link. It is down in the description or you can check out them at classiccountryland.com. Uh, Barky, say thank you. Thank you. All okay. right. Love you long time. Love you long time. So go, go check them out, get some land so you can go training. Let's recap real quickly before we dive into our last two topics. We wanna make sure that we have a good purpose for our rifles. We want to make sure we're not dumping all of our money into just one part of the rifle. We wanna spread it out and make sure that we are you know, overall good quality product. Overall good quality product. And then you don't want to buy something and use something just because you see somebody else mm -hmm. using it and maybe you think that it's a good idea because you might see somebody using something wrong and then you do something wrong and you're just spreading misinformation and that makes you look dumb to somebody that kind of knows what they're doing. Exactly. So those are main three Points. things we've talked about before. Let's dive into the next one. Controversial one. Pet peeve of some people. Warning, all right, color schemes on rifles. Personally, I think like the off the wall color schemes, like the bright oranges, bright, bright greens, bright yellows, like all the stuff that, I, I don't wanna say it's not tactical, but it's not tactical. Yeah, which looks, is. And this is, what, this is what you buy these rifles for, essentially. I think it looks dumb. I'm you not know? the biggest fan. I wouldn't personally do it. Now, it's one thing if you've got like a gun that's F mainly FDE and you want to stick with that color scheme or theme yeah. and you want to buy accessories that are, are, you know, grip stock just to make it all, you know, somewhat match. That's one thing. That's fine. Yeah. That's that's no different than but going this route, having a mainly black rifle and then throwing that on there. That kind of throws the whole thing off. Now, Grant, does it really matter? Not really. 
but it's yeah. kind of a pet peeve OCD kind of thing for me. Does it really matter? No. Yeah. But sticking to one or the other is, you know, that's, well, that's strictly it, preference. It, it's not even that for me. It's like you you have a, you know, a recce build, right? And you're buying this thing for the shit hits the fan scenario, but you have, you know, a blue stock on a blue trigger and a blue rail. I mean, first of all, I don't think any of the blue stuff really doesn't speak to me personally. No. But secondly, if you're buying it for like a use, like yeah. a like a I'm going to defend myself and I'm going to use this when I have to use it. I mean, blue doesn't really do anything for you. No. It, it doesn't do anything for you in the woods. It especially doesn't do anything for you in the woods. You no. know, I mean, somebody might see that blue a mile away walk it or if it's like red or orange or yellow those are those bright colors mm -hmm. you pick up they could be you know counterproductive it's not like it was when we were kids where light up shoes made you faster yeah it, not not in this situation no not, so so paint so, fill paint fill would you paint fill this thing no you want, you want the anderson no I, I don't i don't i don't when, okay so like i get why people paint fill so they can see the brand of the uh the firearm or whatever I mean, HK, all their rifles are halfway paint filled. Right yeah, off the bat. That's HK. <laughs> yeah. Well, if it comes that way, it's different. But, right. if, but, if, you, but if you're taking crown and going and rubbing it in, then yeah. I, I mean, but we, we get it. We get it. You bought an expensive and rifle. If you have a budget in mind, it doesn't have to be a budget rifle. But if you're like, hey, I got $2,500 I've saved up. That's why I got spent on this rifle. The upcharge on all the colored accessories, the, the, little, the little nuancey things that you Don't, can easily get colored for a slight upcharge. For an upcharge, that $20 there, $20 there, $20 there, 30 bucks there, like that's all going to add up and that's going to ruin your budget. Like yeah. if you're trying if you're trying to stick to a budget, I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far. If you're getting a rifle, I think you should stick to the top 3 camo patterns. I think you should go black, green or FDE or like some variant. Like this is a this Cerakote. is midnight bronze Cerakote, but it's kind of like close to FDE. Yeah. Uh, I think the I mean these are guns you're using for you know, tactical purposes. That's why you usually buy them for home defense, long range, you know, recce, whatever shit hits the fan. Yeah. All those are purposes of not flashy. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are building out like a high, high you know, comp, comp, comp gun. Skeletonized. Yeah, a lot of those comp guns, they they are painted in different colors, but they're flashier, they show off. Yeah, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to draw attention. They're trying to draw that yeah. attention. Yeah, and like a lot of those, like, bougie triggers that you know have barely any that are just like i don't know if you've seen them but just have like the little red pieces that oh oh you mean that I mean that little blue guy right there yeah what's the deal with that I, I don't know it's it says the police edition the blue line one no so i was like See, you're weird my money went to the right spot i understand why all of that is you know the crazy color schemes because those are comp shooters they're wanting to be on like magazine yeah. covers trying to draw attention trying to draw attention so i get that but like for the everyday person i i, I just don't like it is but if that makes you happy brings you joy i'm not raining on your parade i am but who am i to tell you what to do spend money on things that matter not yeah. that and speaking of spending money on things that matter you should go check out basement operator company because we got some pretty sweet stuff the only cans how much is know? subscription though Oh, the subscription? Yeah, how much is it going to be? Like, I can, I can handle $5.99. $6.99. $6.99? Yeah, I, like, I like two numbers of that. Yeah. So go check us out, basementoperator.com, or the link in the description there. You can pick up some sweet Only Can sweatshirt or the stickers, because, you know. Everybody loves a good sticker. Everybody loves a good sticker. It's hard to beat a good sticker. That's right. So uh, go check us out. We'd really appreciate it. And now, Sparky, on to our last point to all of this nonsense all right it's knowing your firearm and knowing how to use it because someone can and, go out there well do you want do you want to tackle this but like going out and just buying then spending bukus of money on the nicest stuff not knowing how to use it yeah all right here's a great example this is like a fifteen hundred dollar rifle sure or, <laughs> whoa, oh, whoa, oh. Whoa. what is this now i don't know take it off it's a firearm <laughs> Oh, no, there's a screw. That's why it's not coming. Oh, okay. Anyway, so we have like a hundred and ten dollar bipod and twenty dollar Pro Mag. <laughs> twenty dollar Pro Mags, but like this is an example of spending a lot of money and having it set up dumb. The the scope. 
the first of all there's a scope on the little bitty pistol which is kind of stupid and then it's also the mounted back. backwards so like this is an example of knowing how to use your gun and knowing, knowing how to use the accessories and knowing how to purpose. use the accessories and knowing what accessories you need to have on your gun and then on top of all of that you need to be able to train with it and shoot with it and use it and come become familiar with it so like just an overall competency of what you have and how it's supposed to be used i think is very very crucial and goes a long way in understanding the gun understanding your ability understanding the whole firearms market and the whole firearms mm -hmm. community uh it, it gives you a leg to at least speak and to conversate because like if you if you have this and you show this to somebody they're going to not take a single opinion you have very seriously very seriously because they're going to be like this guy what, what are you even doing <laughs> i mean it won't even sit right because of the yeah it i don't know it just it hurts you know seeing guys and some of it's people just not knowing any better like just, yeah and, and, you know and that's yeah. not you're not I'm not saying that people go in here, oh, I'm gonna do this, you know, I'm, I, I don't have a, a, a purpose for doing this, which is bad, but like, you just don't know any better and that's fine, but do some research, look into it before you go and do it because, but also I'd be real scared of the guy that has one gun and it's a budget gun with a budget optic that he's got $700 in the whole thing and has been running it for years. I'd be a lot more scared of that guy that only has one gun and knows how to use it than a guy has got a bougie Gucci gun it's only shot at once or twice. Yeah. And that, and that, I'd be real scared of the first guy. And that, I mean, that makes a good point. You know, like some of these people, you go out and buy a $500 Anderson and you buy like... Good quality trigger. Good, good quality, quality barrel. You know, and then you, you go put a Vortex on it. The one to four crossfire. Yeah, with the super, illuminated optic. Yeah, super cheap, but it was... It worked. I mean, it, was it, it, it was work. If somebody bought that and trained with it and got really, really good with it... Proficient. They could be deadly with that thing. That's right. And I'd be real scared of that guy. Yeah. I mean, As opposed to the guy that bought the gun, he spent so much money on the gun that he can't afford the ammo to shoot it. The last point is really train with your firearm. Mm -hmm. Figure out what works for you. Understand how to use the products you have. Understanding like mounting an optic, understanding what optics work well with what firearms. Like this is not a long range firearm right here. There's no real need for an LPVO on it. No, uh, need, no need for a bipod. No need for a bipod on it. You know, I mean, to some people, it might, it's, more, <laughs> it's, it's more of a meme at this point. Understanding and having a good, you know, skill set with mm -hmm. your firearm is super, super important. Most important thing. Most important thing. And there's no better way to do that than to train and practice. And, you know, and what better place to train and practice is on your own land. So oh, we yeah. want to give one last shout out to Classic Country Land. Make sure to go give them a look. And make sure to go give me a look. Go check me out on Instagram. I heard I was shadow banned. Multiple people have commented that. So you're going to, have to click the link in the description because it'll take you directly to my Instagram. There you can also find Sparky. So That's right. go check him out as well. I post all kinds of like s story links. That's probably why I've, I've been banned. But so I you're post advertising. I'm advertising. But I post great deals on my story. So that's why you should go check me out. But we really hope you got something from this. We weren't trying to just shit on you this whole time. We were trying to give you kind of a... Uh, inform you on some things. Inform you on some things, on some things to watch out for. My biggest pet peeve is definitely a backwards mounted optics and crazy colors on your firearm but i mean the crazy colors on your firearm is kind of like a you thing mm -hmm. you won't i mean i don't care what you do but i'm just telling you because i bet uh, you a lot of people don't like your rifle yeah but there well i know there is i i have a comment section oh yeah mm. so we appreciate Heartful. it we'll see you on the next one as always take someone outdoors peace